Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to show you how to make an Ultra Sword. And that is a brushless strife raven rapid strike swordfish uh, with adjustable adjustable RPM. And having that ability to adjust the RPM is incredibly useful because, you know, a lot of times you add on modifications and modifications that make it look great, but unfortunately they impact the performance. Now, if you have a limited FPS battle, you can then tune it perfectly to still have the maximum FPS while having your cosmetic mod and we can um, electronically limit it so that you can't just increase it or um, decrease it uh, and there's a video on that but we'll be making one of these um, yeah so sit back and relax there's four parts to this there is uh, the motor cage, which you've already probably 3D printed, uh, you've got to flash the EECs, speed controllers, you've got to flash the uh, Adreno down here, and you've got to do the wiring, which uh, I will step you through all now. You can watch this video, and uh, there's probably a more detailed older version of this that you can also watch. Okay, let's put a few darts through it. I don't have a battery box for it yet, so it's a little bit awkward to say the least. Sounds good to me. That is on the lowest crush too. Okay, everyone, we're going to be uh, making a Ultra Sword today, uh, which will hopefully be a brushless sword worker swordfish, something I have not done before. Um, but we're going to do a new video uh, because quite a lot of things have changed in the last year, and to be honest, it's actually much simpler and cheaper than it was a year ago and actually works better. Um, so I guess there's really four stages to this. There is the 3D printing, which is printing the wheels, uh, the motors and the cage and whatnot, which we're going to have assumed that you have already done for this video. Uh, you then have the programming of the ESCs, which are these guys in this particular case. Uh, you will probably never see these again. These are not uh, the best nor the worst, but not the ones we should be using. Uh, with ESCs, uh, it's incredibly important that you, if the documentation says buy a 32-bit ESC, buy a 32. If it says don't buy a 32, don't buy a 32. There's different code, flashing code for this, and there's also different Arduino code to run the different kinds. So pretty much go to the Thingiverse page and make sure you're using the right thing for the right thing, if you like. Uh, you can use your own ESCs, however, performance will vary, uh, particularly the startup delay. And if we're gonna continue this on with fully automatic, the delay we will have to assume is the same as the uh, ESC we've recommended. We can't, of course, count for differing del delays for different ESCs that we haven't changed. And that does seem to be the case, that depending on what ESC you buy, there is a different delay. So pretty much, if you want the best performance you can possibly have, buy the correct ESCs and we'll all be happy. Uh, so the first thing, uh, sorry, after print of that, the second thing is to flash the ESCs. Uh, then we need to flash the Arduino, and then we need to wire it together. Now, besides this here, which is the buck, that's pretty much it. You've got motors, Arduino, speed controllers, some wiring, 
and obviously a switch and that's it it's very very easy uh, so we are going to start with unfortunately what's probably the hardest part and work our way to the easiest part we're going to work our way from programming the speed controllers then the Arduino then do the wiring which is pretty basic none of this actually requires you to do pr programming so when I say programming I don't mean writing lines of code I mean plugging it into your computer downloading it and clicking program as in write it to the ESCs so I keep saying that but let's actually do it so we're going to flash the ESCs which involves using the Arduino previously I used a, another a flashing USB adapter which is essentially just an Arduino um, that you plug in so you might as well just use this to program this uh, once we've done that we can then program this which will be fairly straightforward as well and then we'll do the wiring so let's do that so to start with we obviously have two ESCs we need to program both we're going to use the Arduino uh, we need to do that from the computer but before we can do that we need to apply power so you can't program these without applying power to here so you'll need one of these and some way of getting power out of there and into there which you could just stick them in there uh, but I probably wouldn't recommend that so I am going to get an end which plugs into the battery and plug it into one of these guys which I find to be rather useful so you can temporarily just screw them on and then we will be able to flashy flashy so I will do that now okay I've now put an end on it which the battery plugs into and seemingly nothing happens because there's no motor to plug in to make that noise and there's no LED on this but it didn't catch on fire so that's probably a good thing now I've just done it like this because it's the easiest way to demonstrate and it is just simply the easiest way to do it uh, you can actually wire both of them on at the same time or of course later we're going to re replace these wires with the proper wires going to this uh, and so you don't really need to do it like this you could put the proper wires on uh, and do it like that but I have not cut a hole in my swordfish for the wires so I haven't done that uh, yet and like I said it's just a bit cleaner for the video uh, so that's what we haven't that's why we've done it like that now interestingly enough uh, people have replied and talked about the fact that actually the hardest part of the whole process is the soldering uh, so I thought I'd actually talk about how to do soldering a little bit now I'm not c claiming I'm a pro at this uh, but I thought it might help now I think one of the biggest problems with soldering is you simply do not have enough hands I mean for this you need to hold this end you need to hold the wire and you also need to hold on to the soldering iron which of course means you need three hands and you're in trouble with that so you actually get one of these uh, which is an extra pair of hands this is really cheap and nasty I'm not sure I'd buy it again uh, it looks like it's a thousand years old but it's not it's less than six months but the chroming is so cheap it's just turned rusty you obviously need some solder and pretty much most things would work uh, normally they have flux inside of them however you will need flux uh, I actually like this liquid flux and before I start I pour that onto a little uh, block of wood which is an old cut out hole from a kitchen bench and I um, use that to clean the end of the tip in there and obviously you need a high quality soldering iron I've been through many soldering irons uh, and this is a really good one where you can set the temperature and it's a 100 watt one but it's a 100 watt one with a really short end on them a lot of the 100 watt ones are like whoa they're like broadswords you can't actually solder anything with these now, there's obviously rip-offs of these and genuine ones but this is a genuine one and it's actually really good you can also use this flux here which is like a paste which sticks on uh, which is okay I actually don't have a preference for either I use both liquid and paste 
but that's pretty much how I actually do the soldering. You'll really, really struggle to solder if you don't have flux. Don't bind the fact that this has got flux in it and that's all you need. Um, I would, uh, when I, before I start, I would clean the end with the liquid flux. And when I'm actually doing the solder in here, all of this will be effectively dirty. So you'll need to add flux to the joints. And of course, I would pre-solder all of the wires first. As in, like, when you buy an ESC, you'll find that it has been pre-soldered. Well, yeah, this has. And so when I cut a piece of wire, I would add flux, then solder it on. And then I would solder it onto my object. So that's how I do it. But anyway, so we have a ESC with power. Now we need to take our Arduino to the computer with our ESC and program those up. So we're going to do that now. Cutscene to desktop computer. Now. Ching ching. Okay, here we are at my computer. Uh, we have our ESC plugged into our battery. There it is. And we have our Arduino. And we have our cable plugged into our computer. So to flash the EEC, we need to flash the Arduino first. So um, what we'll actually do is we'll download the application first. So you need to go to this URL and download it. Obviously, that'll be in the link. You then need to decide which one you're going to download. You need the 32 for the 32-bit ESCs and the standard one for the standard ESC. So this is like our BLH Light Lightning ESC. You download that. In this particular case, we've got a 32-bit ESC, so we need to download that. Get rid of that. Here we go. Do 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 do. Right, that's downloaded, which should be to my downloads. We then need to extract that. Uh, and here it is here. We can now run that. Okay, and this loads up. And the important thing to check is what COM ports are currently being used. So I've unplugged everything under the sun, and therefore there's just the default one of one. But you may have other things, and you want to know um, when you add the Arduino in, uh, which one it's come in on. So, especially if you've got multiple other devices plugged in, you may find that you've actually got two that are similar and you don't know and you program the wrong one. So we now plug the Arduino in. If I can do that. Here we go. Okay, computer made a noise. Don't know if you'll hear that. Then in here we should be able to see another COM port, which is now USB serial CH34. Ah, sorry. Yeah, 340. Now it is possible that when you plug that in, it didn't work and you don't see this and that is because um, the current Arduinos that you buy have got cheap USB ports and they don't work on Windows by default uh, and you have to add the driver now if you are in that situation you should watch this video which will pop up now uh, and how to install that and get it to show but if the, when you plug this in and out this doesn't change then you're in trouble. You can't obviously program the ESC. You also can't program the Arduino in the first place. Uh, well, I don't know about the first place, the second place. Uh, so you need to resolve that. But assuming that that, that that pops up, we then need to load the the code on the Arduino so it can talk to the ESC. So we do that by clicking on the Make Interface. We need to make sure this is the right port, which we've already selected a 5. You then, assuming using a Nano, leave it on, on the default, which is the Nano. Uh, the board rate's fine, then you just click on this button. And it says, do you really want to do this? And you go, yes, I really do want to do this. And it goes away and does it. It then says you need to change it to BL Heli 32 USB slash COM interface. Okay. Uh, in theory, that's all done. You go back to ESC setup. 
Uh, then you change this to what it said, which is the BL Heli32 bootloader COM uh, USB COM. Now, annoyingly, it changes the Jolly COM port, so change it back. You should be able to do a connect. And, well, nothing happened, but something did happen. The Adreno is now flashing, crazy. But it can't find the ESC, which is fairly logical because we don't have it plugged in. So we need to plug that in now. Uh, and you need to get a small screwdriver. And you need to remove the negative, which is always going to be the black one. Ah, that's not true, is it? Probably going to be the black one. Or it could be the dark brown one, I think, on the BL Heli 2, um, the lightning ones. Anyway, you should check. I'll um, keep a record of that on the thingy side of which one is the negative, which color. But in this is, case, it's pretty obvious it's going to be black. So I've already done this, luckily. Need to use one of these to lift up this little black lip so you can pull that out. You then need to find a D12, sorry, D3. D3, which of course is hard for me on the camera. D3, D3 is here. And the white one, or the signal, needs to plug into D3, like that. And the black one needs to plug into ground, which is this one over here. And as soon as I did that, the computer realized that I plugged in an, uh, sorry, plugged in a ESC. And we can now read that by clicking on this button. And it just reads the default settings off of the ESC. And you can now make changes of them. You can flash it, I hope, yep, to the latest firmware. However, this is already on the latest firmware of 32.4, so there's no need to do that on this case. Uh, I do expect them to roll out updates periodically, and you should do that if there is one available. You should now download my Thingiverse things. Now, presumably you've already actually done this, because you can't have 3D printed it without doing that, I don't think. But we will download all the files, read the license. It's for personal use, you can't sell it. Do, 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 do. Okay, now you need to find that, and you need to extract that. You will then be presented with a list of files, uh, and these are different flashes for the different kind of ESCs. I'll make it clear on the Thingiverse page which is which, uh, but this is for the Emacs Lightning one, which is the normal uh, non 32 bit, if you like, and this is for the ESC that we're using at the moment for this demonstration video. However, uh, you we will I won't be recommending using this one, but this is what I'm using for the video, and it's fairly clear it's a 32 bit one. So, we needed that file so we can program the speed controller with the correct settings. So, we go back to this, we now go ESC setup, read from any file. And we need to find where that went to, which was here. Whoops, missed. And you select the one you want, and then write it. And now it's written it, and you can read it. So we have done one ESC. It's fairly straightforward. So plug in your Arduino, flash it. Plug in the speed controller, flash it. Done. Now we've got two of these, so we need to do it twice. Uh, I can disconnect that.
find D3. Find ground. Connect it, read it, good. Read from any file. And write it. Done, disconnected. So there you go. You have now flashed both the speed controllers. And they are ready to be used now. And now we need to move on to flashing the Arduino, which as you can imagine is not going to be too hard since we had to use the Arduino to flash the ESC. So we've got this far, we've definitely done the hard part, which as you can actually see, it's actually really easy. As long as you follow along. Okay, we're now going to program the Arduino. Now the first thing to do is to make sure you've closed the BL Heli suite. If you're like me and, and are rather impatient and didn't disconnect it, um, you may find that you'll have problems because the uh, BL Heli 32 application is connecting to the Arduino, which you're now trying to use the Arduino IDE to connect to, and you'll have problems. So make sure you've closed that. Download this from this link, I think. make a contribution once you've done that you can run it and install it which I already have done so this will load up with something not very interesting you need to now uh, go to the files you downloaded from the thingiverse and open those so we can do an open we can go to uh, downloads wherever uh, they went to here we go files and in this particular case there's only one option so we open that it then says some random thing about needing to be in a sketch folder name and you're like whatever so just go okay it then opens up in a new window which is always annoying but it does uh, this is the code now you do not need to code any of these things all you need to do is write that to the Arduino. So, this is very similar to the BL Heli 32 application. First of all, we need to plug the Arduino back in, don't we? Now, luckily, we already knew that based on the last um, writing of the ESCs, we knew it was on COM5, so you'll need to make sure it's set to COM5. We'll need to make sure the board is set to a Arduino Nano and we'll need to make sure that the processor is a 3228 and then you click this button here and this should flash which it is and it's uploading and we're done so there you go you flash the Arduino that's really really simple isn't it uh, now all we need to do is solder everything together and we have an Ultra Sword. Yeah, or Ultra Strife, Strife, Ultra Raven, whatever you want to call it. If I can pronounce any of them, it seems so hard for me. Uh, so we shall start some soldering now. Yeah. A cutscene back to the garage, or garage, or however you're supposed to say that annoying word. Alright, shoot. Okay, time for some soldering. Right, well I guess we should start with the obvious thing, power. Um, it's fairly straightforward, you need your battery connector, which I still have connected, connected to that, which I'll probably remove. We need to apply positive and negative to the two speed controllers. And we need to apply power to our Arduino. Now the power to this, uh, happens through one of these which is a BEC. Now the whole point of this is that 
Unfortunately, you can't apply like 12 volts to this, even though you theoretically should be able to. You did cost cutting, and if you apply about anything more than 9 volts, it dies. So we use this to step the voltage down from 12 or 15 or 16 or, or whatever you're using down to about 5 volts. So we, uh, we apply the power into the 5 volt in, not the V in on the Arduino, because this, this steps it down to 5.2, which is too uh, little for the V in. And the whole purpose of this is that this has a large amount of capacitance and diodes in it, which holds the voltage up for one of these guys. One of the big problems we had is that when you fire this up, it would pull all the current out of your battery, which this is a tiny one. Uh, that would cause the voltage to go down, and that would cause the Arduino to turn off. And since the Arduino is powering the EECs, that would tell the EECs to stop powering the motors, and thus it was not much fun. So we have one of these in here to hold the power up to the Arduino uh, during that spike, or wouldn't be a spike, but it would be a dip during that dip. Uh, so this is actually quite important and just any random BEC uh, is not suitable because we want one that uh, has a diode to keep the voltage in the Arduino when, the, when it sags on the battery and obviously it needs to be able to hold power long enough for that sag to go away and keep the Arduino up. So we have one of those, we need to apply power to that, so really we need to solder all of these things together here's the other one all of these red and black wires together uh, uh, into one of these now I don't know how I'm going to do this on this one there's no particular right way or wrong way all we need to do is give positive to those ones and negative to those ones as well and it could be helpful to run an additional ground because we end up with a whole bunch of wires that need to be ground. Historically, I've always put the EECs underneath the cage, uh, because that's where they fit on a strife. However, in the swordfish, we've got so much more space that you could actually, at least in theory, fit the EECs in front of there, and the barrel goes over them. But I'll probably still put them there. The Adreno, I mean, we've in the past, uh, sorry, I dropped it. I have to go and get it. We've had it in here with the BEC, which I think will still work. I don't know. Uh, and then recently I've actually moved it to, to here in the strife because you could open the lid and then you had access to the Arduino to program it, which was pretty cool. And you couldn't use this for anti jamming because of the dark guide, but you never needed to clear jams because it never jammed because it has the dark guide. Um, so, I will apply power, and I think I'm just going to use the existing little holes in there, for the good or the bad, and like I said, this is not the most thought through how we're going to do it, because I've never done it before. So, I will apply power to those three things right now. Right, well, I've done my soldering, so over here... I've got my three wires coming in for each one. Well, that's at least how I've decided to do it for this build. Uh, one going for each ESC, and one going to the buck, and then the buck goes to my Adreno, which I've decided to put down here, and I've just moved this the wires apart, and then I could just plug it straight into the five volts and the ground from here, which I thought was pretty cool. We'll try that out anyway. And that does still fit down here somehow. Now, I do actually have some random black wires, uh, which I'm going to use for more electronics, like auto pusher. So I decided it was a pretty good time just to add that in, but <laughs> you don't necessarily need these random but you could use those for auxiliary. Certainly a good place for grounding. Uh, now after that we need to do the signal and the grounding of the ESCs. 
which I use a splitter for now on the Thingiverse. I say don't use a straight one, use a twisted pair to reduce interference. Um, it has proven to be true, I just don't happen to have one of those right now, so this will just have to do. I mean, uh, we can essentially just plug those in, and I like being able to plug them in. My original build I soldered them together, uh, but oh, I'm t I take apart this thing all the time, so having plugs is actually really nice. Uh, so they can fit in here and blah 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 and they can end up down here and the white one or the signal needs to be plugged into D9 which is somewhere uh, here and then the black one needs to be ground now if you do have um, signal or glitchiness probably the ground should not be grounding through the BEC which is what will happen if we plug it into here uh, it should be more ideally plugged into there um, but um, and that might have been of course real easy if I'd put the Adreno there but I want to put something else there like that later on hopefully though that feels seems pretty filled up right now so um, I think that's what we're going to do. We're just going to now move the red one you can ignore because the red one doesn't go anywhere on these EECs. So we can take the black out and we can plug that into the additional ground on here. And I'll put a shrink wrap on it because I don't have a... Obviously if I take that black one out it's just going to be flailing around. Um, but that kind of leaves it all pluggy any, which I quite like too. Right, so I'll do that now. Okay, I've done that now. I plugged it in the other end. Uh, well, I think I did that on the last shot. Uh, I have removed the black. White is on D9. Black is on ground. And that's still plug in -able. It's not soldered on. I did add in an additional wire, which I just soldered to the top of this. Uh, the reason for that is the very next stage is we need to do the trigger. And the trigger needs a ground. So that seemed like a perfect opportunity to fire up a ground. So I guess that leads us to doing the trigger next. Okay. I've soldered the ground onto C and the sig signal onto NO. And I had one of these. So there again that plugs into D2. And that makes life really simple. I can take it all apart. I just need to screw that on. We need to deal with the motors. And in theory we are ready for liftoff. Uh, need to do something about those dodgy ones as well, but anyway, let's do that. Okay, before we um, solder the motors on, I thought we should talk a bit about uh, installing the motors. Um, black one should be at the top, red one at the bottom, otherwise they'll self undo, that'll be a bad situation. Uh, if you've got, you preferably use the long screws, not the short ones. Now, I have ground these posts down. You do or do not have to do that. I used uh, first a cutoff blade like that, and then I used a stone. And when I used the stone, I actually turned the wheel around to get it nice and flat and nice. If you don't do that, then you have to drill holes in the top of the stripe and the swordfish. Unfortunately, uh, it's fairly easy if you want to do that. You put the motor in. You can push down or turn it, or even fire up the motors. And it will actually make an indent, which you probably can't really see on the camera, um, as to where to drill the holes. But I'm not a fan of that, so I, I always grind the motors down. So, ESC-wise, you have two ESCs, which have three wires, and each motor has three wires. Now, to some degree, it doesn't matter which one you solder on, solder on them in any order. And if it, one, if the motor turns the wrong way, swap the order of two over the three and then it will go the correct distance, a distance direction. You could alternatively unplug this and reflash them to change the direction because that's actually one of the options in BL Heli. However, if you've used the Arduino over here, that's actually a lot of hassle to do that. 
especially if you've soldered it all on, which I haven't in this case, uh, then it's just such a big hassle that it's easier and I've always just unsoldered two wires and swapped them around. So I will solder on some wires and see how I go. Okay, I've soldered it up, took a punt, let's find out. I got my 2S battery in. Okay, that's the first part saying that's the second part. Right, so we should have some go now. We do. And naturally I've managed to actually uh, <laughs> do that the wrong way around. So now I need to swap two of those and try it again. And I'll solder up the other one at this time as well. Okay, I managed to solder both of them up the wrong way around, so I had to change both. But hopefully, we are good to this time. 3S plugged in, put a bit of electrical tape on there, and my random ends. Now, I doubt that's a very charged battery. Well, I've never charged it, so... <laughs> nice. Especially when you're considering that's on the rev down. Yeah. Cool. So that pretty much works. Let's screw that in and give it a whirl. Um, I'm having to use my high accuracy, low back pressure front end because on the swordfish it doesn't come with a little barrel so there's quite a big gap. Um, so just on that you need to make sure you've filed off the edges and I, before I put it on here, had this down here. Just trying to sand down the high points a bit because otherwise, you know, 3D printed stuff is kind of scratchy, which doesn't help performance. But let's see if we can't uh, get it going. I keep saying that, and I haven't actually done it yet, have I? Oh yeah, that's not going to work now, is it? Okay, there we go. Let's bang the top on, I guess. I'm not going to screw it on. I haven't come up with a way of uh, plugging a battery in. I have no idea what kind of battery power that has. Oh, another interesting thing is that when, is that when you pull a trigger... Oh yeah, I need to wait. The light should come on. Sounds like perfection to me. Now, like I said, I have no idea what battery. I haven't got a battery box for it. So, I have no idea how much power is in this thing. Oh. I haven't put the return spring on, so I can only shoot it once. <laughs> Anyway, so that's theoretically done, right? Yeah? Nah. We need the uh, trim pot, don't we? 
But that is the basic one. However, I'm pretty sure everyone actually does add the pot to it, uh, or the knob, or the knob, which I think we'll be adding to this one on the other side. Uh, mainly because this is supposed to be for my son who's left-handed, so the other side makes sense. And probably even for me, I would do it on the far side, maybe, because I'm potentially going to put stuff on the other side. Sounds pretty good to me. It's generation three cage in there. And that just goes to show how far we've come because <laughs> some of the other videos it sounded horrible in. So pot wise, it's fairly easy. Uh, negative or ground. This one goes, the middle one goes to the a7 on the Arduino and we have positive 5 on the outside and then you can adjust the RPM woohoo and that's super awesome if you want to run limited mainly because you can adjust the RPM chrono it and you can put all your crazy modifications on and all your modifications do is make it <laughs> less FPS then you can turn chrono it and get absolute perfection uh, FPS to the FPS limit. This is the one of the best things about our um, whole system is that you can add all your cosmetic mods or your accuracy improving mods uh, and then you don't have to lose out on FPS because you can just increase it and decrease it. And I have a video about the, the settings within the Arduino which you can look at now and you'll need that probably if you're going to swap between BL Heli 32 and normal one, normal one as well and of course we're going to need that to enable the pot which is currently going to be disabled by default so definitely check that video out um, assuming I've actually done it which I will have okay I've soldered that on now 5 volts ground or negative and the signal signal going to A7 the ground and the positive I took off the back of the buck before it goes down there it's made sense um, the cable is a bit long now this doesn't work at all because we need to enable it in the code so I shall go and enable it in the code okay now I've enabled the pot and I've installed it on the other side so in theory <coughs> Looking good. And now we're done. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you can recreate it. Uh, sign up for my Patreon if you like. Because I spend so much money and time on this. It's not believable. Anyway. That'd be cool if you did. Um, yeah. Hopefully you all enjoy it. And destroy the enemy. Because you should be able to. Alright guys. See you on the next one.